Hey guys, happy Tuesday. Time for Tidbit Tuesdays. So it's September. And what that means for me is that this is the month I attend multitude of trainings, webinars, in-person gatherings, all presented by insurance companies, going over all the plan changes that are going to happen for 2025. And so right now I am bombarded and trying to learn all the new things so that you don't have to. Um, I figure out maybe who's leaving the market. If you have Ascension personalized care, that will not be an offering in 2025. They are exiting the market. Uh, right now I've not heard of any new players entering the market. <clears throat> I still think we're going to have the same carriers, whether it be depending on your state, Cigna's available uh, in some areas, not in other areas, Blue Cross, Oscar, Ambetter, which has gotten super expensive. Um, they keep asking me why I don't sell more. Well, because <laughs> your prices are really expensive. It doesn't work for people. Um, so... There's been a lot of rules and regulations this year trying to make sure that insurance carriers are being compliant with the Affordable Care Act. And one of the ways is not offering, it's confusing to consumers when there's so many different plans offered when they're almost exactly the same. So streamlining the plans and also the ACA is also going to make sure that insurance carriers are upholding their end of the bargain with networks. This has been an issue this last year. So for an example, Blue Cross Blue Shield, who is the largest uh, insurance carrier in Texas, has two networks, My Blue Health and Blue Advantage. Blue Advantage is a much bigger network but come to find out, My Blue Health is really a teeny tiny network and also does not meet the standards of ACA. And what do I mean by that? It means is they have to have enough providers in, within a certain radius of a zip code to offer those plans. I've had several people this year that were on My Blue Health. And I had one lady who lived in San Antonio, not a small city, but San Antonio. And she had my blue health and could not find an in-network mammogram place within 100 miles. It's ridiculous. So they're cracking down on that, making sure that the plans that are offered, that there is a variety of providers available in that area, which is super important. You know, I do plug in doctor's names, things like that, to make sure that they show up on the list. I always ask you to double check. But... For things like labs or x-rays or, or mammograms that need to be covered, no one thinks to check that. And quite honestly, I cannot go through every plan and make sure within your radius there's a mammogram place or there's a lab. So I really think this is a good thing that they're cracking down and making sure the plans are compliant with ACA. So... I am learning all the things for you guys this month to help me better serve you during open enrollment. It is fast approaching. Open enrollment begins November 1st, ends December 15th for plan renewals for January 1st. You can hop on my calendar even now if you want a time with me during that time period. And... If, if you miss, if you have coverage now and you miss that deadline, it will auto-renew and you may not be happy with that. We can still make the change up to January 15th, but that change will not go into effect till February 1. If you don't have coverage, you have till January 15th to get coverage for 2025. And then let's evaluate. There are self, some self-employed plans that if you don't qualify for the tax credit, can make a lot of uh, financial sense for you and your family. But if you do qualify for the tax credit, that's usually your best option, unless you want a PPO. Uh, the self-employed plans are PPO, and you can get a self-employed plan. If you're a 1099 employee, you have an LLC, 
or you're a licensed person, like a hairstylist, an electrician, a plumber, um, an insurance agent, <laughs> people uh, that can actually um, work on their own, even if they work for somebody right now, but need a, a regulated license, that would count as a 1099 as well. Even, even people who are Mary K reps, realtors, uh, Avon, I could go on and on, but there's so many people that would qualify for the self-employed plans. So if you're trying to get a hold of me, please, please, please make an appointment on my calendar. Unless you can email me with a question. If you call me, I may not answer because I'm already super busy and gearing up for open enrollment season. Until next week, peace out.